Good morning, everybody. Welcome. I'm back. I was off last week. Oh my goodness, I caught the worst uh, cold virus that was going around uh, during the holidays. So um, I'm still not 100%, but I'm getting pretty close now. So uh, welcome back. <laughs> and uh, today we're going to work on a uh, pine cone. So I thought what I would do is include the drawing process too. Uh, sometimes I have the drawing done. It all depends on, on the amount of time that I think it's going to take. So I'm going to start with the, uh, the drawing today because we're not going to be dealing with a lot of uh, complex background or anything. All right, so this is our reference picture. And uh, this is actually a pine cone off my tree. And it... Uh, uh, no, it's not canceled. I'm here. Um, I'm just reading uh, to see if I've missed anything. Okay, so um, in in the drawing process, let's talk about that for just a moment, because if you start off your watercolor with a drawing that doesn't look right, it the, all the paint in the world isn't going to save you. So I'm going to think first of all in terms of um, width and height. So um, if, if I'm looking at this drawing, and I'm going to actually draw on this uh, reference picture here for a minute, but and, and I'm not using anything special here, I'm just using a, a regular um, technical pencil. It's, um, it's an HB lead, so nothing nothing fancy. But if I look at the height here, and, and if if I actually put this in a box, let's put it this way. We'll put this pine cone in a box. Now you can't see that line very well, but if I put this pine cone in a perfectly fitting box, I can see that it's actually taller than it is wide. So I know that I want to be able to paint this or draw this at a, um, at a little bit of an angle. Um, and so I'm looking at this box, I'm looking at the angle, especially this angle here, okay, this angle right here. If this were a clock hand, this to me would be about uh, seven minutes past the hour maybe. So that's the angle that I'm gonna be looking at. So if, I'm, if I wanna orient it the same way on my painting or on my paper, that's what I wanna do. So I'm going to start off here with a line and I'll try to keep that at approximately the same angle. Let's see, maybe a little bit more. Okay, and, and I know that my pine cone is a little bit um, taller than it is wide, so I'm going to fit it into this box. Now, I'm drawing this on my watercolor paper, which normally I would do this on a separate piece of paper, but just um, to make things a little bit faster, I'm going to do it directly on my paper. And I'm also drawing this a little bit darker than I would normally do. I would Usually these sort of construction lines, I would do much lighter. So now I have the context. I have the placement on my page. And I have to look at where the, the tip of the pine cone is now here. So I'm looking at this and it's approximately in the middle of the, of the box here. So I know that the middle of my um, pine cone will come there. So I'll do a dotted line there. All right, so now we know kind of where that is. Let's divide it again, make like kind of a grid here. I'm doing, just doing a dotted line here. All right, so let's get the shape. This comes kind of straight down. This kind of comes here. And then it comes straight up. And I'm not trying to, to do it in an oval. I'm trying to do it more with straight lines here because it's really not that perfectly shaped. So a proportional divider. Yes, I do have a proportional divider. If you're working from life, uh, you can still use a proportional divider, 
but you must use it at arm's length um, in order for that to work. For those of you that don't know what an, a proportional divider is, um, <laughs> I'm trying to think where offhand where it is, uh, but it is a it, it is shaped like this, right? So you put one part, or, or you can you can measure. Um, I'm trying to think of how I've how I've used it. Um, yeah, you can measure something and then you flip it over and it's like a pair of scissors actually. So it's it's like an X, like this, and you can adjust this to make it more of an X or um, to make two hands longer than another. Maybe I'll have to show that for another day. But it basically you use one side to measure your um, reference picture, then you use the other side to draw on your paper you know if you want to enlarge or reduce and it keeps things in proportion hence the name so i've got arrows and it's not and it's not full bright i'm not really sure what you mean <laughs> um i've got arrows and it's not full bright i Sorry, I don't understand what that means. <laughs> anyway, back to the drawing. And uh, we've got the overall shape, the overall placement now on our, on our sheet. So from here, I'm going to start to divide things. And I'm going to keep in mind those clock angles. So for example, this one's going straight up. So it's 12 o'clock. So I know I have one segment here that's 12 o'clock. One that's around 2 o'clock. And I'm looking at, you know, when when these bend and that sort of thing, I'm looking at that type of an angle as well. And I'm just looking at the overall uh, shapes of things here. I'm not fine-tuning anything at the moment. Fine-tuning comes after you get all the proportions, all the the uh, perspective, the the shape, the general shape and so on, then the details come in. Don't get ahead of yourself and start putting in details before you've got the general shape in. That's very important. All right, so having this having this dividing line right here is going to tell me whether or not I am a uh, whether or not I'm uh, going past, like if I'm fitting this in too small of an area, for example. So uh, I know that the, the halfway mark here, let's put a line right through here, um, that, that sort of halfway mark tells me that I know that when I get down to this part of the drawing, that that's gotta be around the halfway mark. And I think I'm going to end up pretty close to that. You have to fine tune a few things afterwards, but first I want to just get the general shapes in here. And each one of these Here's my pine cone right here. Each one of these, um, and I don't know what they're called, but the, each piece of this uh, pine cone that pro projects uh, out from the center, uh, if as it comes towards you, it becomes foreshortened, which means that it might be long, but if it's coming towards you, it doesn't appear that way. It, it's as if I put my arm towards you, it doesn't look long. All you see is the ends of my fingers, and uh, so it doesn't appear long. So you get this foreshortening. Now these, these uh, uh, portions, I know there's a name for it. I just don't know what it is. Uh, somebody, somebody's going to look it up for me and, and let me know in the chat, I'm sure. But each, each section of the pine cone 
is changing a direction. And it's also, you've got this perspective that's going on and all of this kind of stuff that's happening all at the same time. So I'm really just looking at those clock angles and trying to fit it into the little boxes that I've made. That's generally what I'm doing. I'm not going to try to get into one point or two point perspective or anything uh, sort of complex like that or mathematical like that. I'm, I'm doing this more visually than anything else. I'm not trying to use any, any special formulas or anything like that. Sorry if I'm sounding a little bit congested, because I am. <laughs> Still a little bit. Let's see. We're getting there. And I'm sketching pretty quickly here because if I have to make a correction, um, like I don't want to get everything in here and then find out I have to change it all and erase everything. So I'm just going to sketch this part quickly, try to get the proportions in, and then, then as I said, I'll fine tune. All right, so I think I have all of the little portions of my pine cone now. Uh, maybe one, this one that's kind of coming straight up at me. don't have that one in and one here that comes out all right so I think I'm almost ready to fine-tune a few things here I guess that has to come down more so this is where I start to fine tune. Now, if I'm if I'm drawing on my watercolor paper, I like to use a kneaded eraser because the kneaded eraser is a lot more gentle on my watercolor paper. First thing I can do is I can start to remove some of the um, the uh, box and the working lines. So I'll get rid of those first. The thing I like about the kneaded eraser is basically you can roll it on your paper. It's not as abrasive to the surface, which makes it a lot nicer for painting on. All right, so I think this could actually extend up a little bit more. So rather than trying to fit it in my box, I think this needs to just extend up a little bit more. And that will make a little more sense. I thought I was good today and I sound a little bit rough but um, there we go now I actually have the pine needles but I cut that off my tree this morning and uh, my hands are so sticky <laughs> so I'm leaving that behind me here so I'm not going to bring that over and uh, get any of that on my um, think scales on the pine cone thank you <laughs> Okay, so scales, that makes sense. All right, so as I come in and uh, start to fine tune this, I'm gonna look for things like, is it the same width? Each one of these scales, are they the same width all the way along? Or like I've got the angles, I've got the placement. Now let's start to fine tune and, and determine whether or not any of these get skinny or if they are fatter, anything like that. I guess I have to fit another one in here as well. No, I've got to move this one up. That's what I've got to do. Okay, so already I see something that I have to correct. And having the overall positioning of things, uh, I, can, I can definitely clean this up and get this more accurate. So, for example, this has to come in more than I had it. So, I'm also considering the, um, like the thickness here, this this little thickness here, as I as I'm working on this, that each one of these scales has a thickness, and and is it the same all the way through? You can see as I turn this, the width changes 
for all of these, they either get very thin or they um, get fatter. So it all depends on the angle you're looking at. <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me. Um, <clears throat> okay, so uh, we're going to come up here. And fine tune some of this. And when it comes to something that's complex, um, one little clue that might help you in your watercolor is to indicate where some of the dark areas are going to go. Now, if you're putting dark paint down, you're really not as concerned about pencil lines. If you're putting light colors down, especially if you're working with something like a yellow, uh, you really have to be careful of those pencil lines being very, very light. But in order to help me sort this out, when it comes to the painting process, I might even take my pencil and pencil in where the darks are. Now this is something that I will do in in a subject like this, but also in crystal or something like that, where it can get very, um, very confusing when you have a lot of lines and to sort out what's what. Because, you know, it all starts to look like brain surgery after a short while because you have so many lines in there. So by lightly... I'm doing it a little bit darker than I normally would, but if, if I lightly put those in there, it helps to keep me on track so I don't get confused or accidentally start start drawing this one when really I meant to do this one. So it's easy to do when you have something that has many, many moving parts here, <laughs> or many sections, right? Maybe not moving parts, but sections. <clears throat> So I hope everybody had a nice New Year's. Uh, we are, what, day day three, day two? I don't know what, I don't even know what day it is. The holidays always mess me up. But uh, day two in the new year, day three, I think. Three, I guess. And so by putting in some of these darker areas, it also helps me to visualize uh, exactly where I'm going with this. So, let's just keep going with some of this. And I'm looking for all these little, little subtle changes. Like, you know, if there's a little bend in the, in the uh, scale, then, uh, you know, I would put that in. First, I did them kind of boxy, you know, like this one right here looks like a box. But now I can start to fine tune this and really turn it into a shape. Here we've got, almost looks like a little ruffle. <laughs> so there's a dark shape that's going to go right in here. And That extends out a little bit from the box. And then we have a gap here, and this has to come down. I'm, I'm adjusting a few things as I go along here. I can see that, you know, oh, I went a little bit too, 
wide on this first attempt or something like that and I can uh, start to adjust things a little bit. Taking your time with the drawing will certainly... I've never regretted it, put it that way. I have never regretted spending time to do a proper drawing. Not everything I demonstrate on Wednesday mornings can be, uh, you know, I can take the time to do it because we, are, of course, are live. But uh, I will try to do the best I can in the amount of time that I have. All right, so it's getting pretty dark up in here, so I'm going to shade in there. All right. Let me see here. Okay, I've got... A gap there. And it really helps. I, I find that seeing the shadows in here helps me to realize whether or not it's actually looking right or not. If, you, if you're only looking at lines, you know, it's kind of like looking at a coloring book, right? It, it doesn't always look dimensional. So by putting in some of the shading, even with your pencil, I mean, you can put it in there just for the drawing process. Roll your um, kneaded eraser over it lightly and lift some of that color even, or some of that pencil, and your your shadows and everything will still be there. You'll just, it'll, it won't show through the watercolor though. Let's see here, we'll just get the last few in here quickly. And I have to remember they're not, they're not all paper thin. They, they actually have a depth to them. So I have to put sometimes shadows in, in places. One, two, three, okay. <laughs> Trying to get myself sorted here. So uh, you can see I'm changing a few things from what I initially did, but I had the overall idea with the first first uh, sort of rough drawing. That's why you don't lock in or start detailing things because once you get everything in and you start making a comparisons, it's those comparisons that tell you whether or not you're on the right track. Okay, so I think I'm pretty much there. It's time for me to to start to clean this up, uh, like just final final lines and that sort of thing. But uh, I think that's pretty good. I, I think I can probably even start getting into my paint. So let's, uh, let's take a look at this and Am I painting this in my head while I sketch? Well, I guess sort of, <laughs> sort of. I'm, uh, I'm always thinking in the paint painting process. Uh, I mean, I guess I'm thinking of it in in my head because I know that if I don't have some of the shadows sort of indicated on my drawing, I could very easily get lost. Watercolor pencils work to sketch with. Uh, they would. Uh, I know some people. I don't personally use them. I don't. I find that those um, 
you know, because they're water soluble and everything that they will, um, they will blend out and which is fine because you're blending it into the same colors. But as you're putting your first washes on, you may lose, uh, like some of it may dissolve and you may lose a little bit of it. I just prefer a pencil myself, but, um, you know, to each their own, everybody has their own preference. So I'm going to go over to my, uh, brushes now. I'm going to grab a, let me grab something smaller than that. I want to grab a couple of brushes here. Let's take, this is a, this is a number 10 and this is a six, seven, a seven. There's my six right there. There's a six, a little bit smaller. So uh, a large, a medium and a small, basically medium and small brush. All right, so the lightest color that I'm seeing in here um, is a, it's kind of a, a nice, almost an orange color. So I'm going to take maybe a little bit of my burnt sienna. I'm going to maybe drop in a little bit of quinacridone gold. And I'm putting in the quinacridone gold because it will sort of liven up this um, otherwise uh, flat looking uh, pine cone so <clears throat> I'm going to uh, just generally paint the whole the whole pine cone at, the, at this time so I'm working on dry and I've I've got my larger brush here and I'm just going to start painting in all of this pine cone <clears throat> Sorry. I actually haven't painted for an entire week. <laughs> Anybody who knows me knows that that's in, that's really never happens. <laughs> I am I'm usually painting all the time. But uh this week really kicked me on my behind, so. All right, so I'm just coming in. I'm carefully working in my shapes and I can still see my pencil lines through this. I've, I've got a lot of Quin gold in here. Quinacridone gold is a nice transparent, uh, kind of a gold color it's it's not exactly orange it's not exactly yellow but it's um, this really nice gold color and I'm also looking uh, to make sure that I'm not accidentally filling in uh, where there's gaps between these scales oh I have <laughs> Well, thank you, Vicki. I, I didn't even realize I had more than 30,000 subscribers. That's wonderful. Well, what a happy New Year's present that is. Thank you so much. All right, I'm keeping this fairly transparent because I do know that it is, um, it is going to be the lightest of my colors. I have to be careful not to overdo it though with the light because, and it's very, very easy to do that because when you're looking at, uh, when you're looking at the first wash of something, what happens is you're seeing it against the white paper and therefore uh, against the white paper, it seems really dark, but we haven't put the darks in yet. And, uh, so when those darks go in, you'll realize this really wasn't as light as you thought. I think I might have to do a little less talking. <laughs> this is the most talking I've done since, uh, since I acquired this lovely cold. All right, so. And the rest of this pretty much just gets filled in. So I'm going to do that. Don't have to worry about 
shadows or anything like that. I'm just going to paint right in here. Okay, so I think that's got it now, and um, and I want to start mixing up something darker. So I'm going to take some of my burnt sienna. Let's take that burnt sienna, and I'm going to add a little bit of. I'm going to add some neutral tint to that. Neutral tint will make it a nice uh, dark, dark color for me, dark brown. All right. So now I'm going to come in and where I had all those uh, shadows penciled in, I'm going to come in and start um, darkening in those sections. I'm also look be going to be looking for um, any subtle changes. Like there's, you know, maybe there's a little sliver of light between some of these uh, scales or something like that. I've seen a lot of uh, other sort of demos on YouTube that um, indicate loose ways of doing the uh, pine cones and things like that, but not a lot of... Uh, not a lot of realistic ones. One of the reasons that you don't see a lot of the realistic ones online is time, right? It takes a long time to do something realistically. So uh, I'm going to do as much as I can in the given time, but uh, I will need to kind of fast track it. Obviously, you know, the more time I have, the more fussy I can be. Now most of this at the top here has dried, or at least dried enough that I can come in with this if that some of the edges get a little soft. I'm not too concerned about it just yet because I have quite a bit still to do. I'm looking, some of these shadows, it's thick in one spot and then it might just become very, very thin in another place. So those are all things that I'm looking for. You know, the thickness of the lines now. And I'll be able to uh, finesse this and get it even more detailed as I go along. With every layer, I can add a little bit more depth or detail to it. I'm looking for the main shapes though right now. So we start off with just the light color, then we look for the main shapes, kind of like the way we're drawing it, right? The basic shape, then then we start to get them, you know, break it down a little bit more, and we start to eventually fine tune it. And so we're doing kind of the same idea, the same process in in a way as we did with the drawing. But now we're doing it with paint, of course. Am I concerned about it being like technically, like if I overlaid my drawing on the actual picture, would it be exact? Of course not. I'm looking for a realistic um, interpretation of this. So in order to, to make this look realistic, I did need to kind of analyze how each of these scales are constructed and that type of thing.
And by taking your time and drawing something out, it gives you a really good understanding. By the time you get the paint out, you've got a much better understanding of how how the whole thing is constructed. You know, you've studied it. And that's why, you know, and I have to agree that uh, plein air painters uh, really advocate uh, going out in nature and painting from life because you spend more time uh, actually analyzing and studying something when you're actually painting it than, than you would just picking up your phone and, and snapping a picture. So you're breaking it down into under, smaller, understandable, digestible bits. Gonna take an edge, just soften an edge here and there. Don't see too many places where I need to soften much more. You'll notice I blotted my brush too. I, I don't want to have my brush too wet here. I'm trying to get, um, you know, some finer points, like smaller detail, that sort of thing. So I don't want to have my brush too, too, too wet at this point. And I'm constantly looking back at my uh, reference picture. Every little stroke I do, I'm looking at my reference picture because if I keep looking, I'm not going to just uh, fall back into autopilot. You know what I mean by autopilot? You just assume you know what, you're, what it should look like rather than actually looking at it. And that's an important thing to remember when you're both drawing and painting is autopilot can be the worst thing. <laughs> because then you're then you start to draw what you think you should be seeing rather than what you actually are seeing. Um, no, you would not be able to get these brushes at Curry's. Uh, these brushes I ordered online. If you want to know any of my uh, typical um, materials. You can go, there's a page on my website, my website's right here, uh, that you can go to, and it's called Materials. And uh, it lists all of the materials that I typically use, the names, the sizes, everything else. And um, at the bottom of that page is a list of uh, places where you might be able to purchase uh, certain, certain things. So I have a list of... Uh, Suppliers. I'm not sponsored by anybody. I just, you know, I'm try I know I have. I teach a lot of classes, so I have a lot of students asking me where, uh, where to buy this, where to buy that, and I answer those questions so often. I thought, well, that's silly. Why don't I just put it on my page, and then they have a link. So I've put it on my page uh, where I buy my, where I buy things, and uh, different suppliers that people have shared with me as well. You know, I may not may not even be suppliers that I've actually tried in the past, but who have uh, been referred to me. So you can see how this is uh, starting to take some shape now. Looking at some of these shadows. I'm going to soften a couple of edges here, rinse and blot my brush. Lay the, lay the brush in the clean spot and touch only the tip to the wet paint. And it always works best in, when the paint is wet. It doesn't work very, very well to soften an edge that's already dried. 
There are lines down the center. The scale's too light to paint in now. Uh, oh yeah, that's a that's very much a detail. The, they're actually they're actually darker lines right there. Th those are darker lines down the middle. They're not lighter. So um, yeah, I'll I'll probably do that later. I'm I'm really looking more at the big shapes, um, the the things that create the form, not the detail, but the things that create the form. Those are the shadows that I'm really uh, looking at. Thanks, Vanessa. Yeah, there was a lot of this uh, this cold going around during the during the holidays. Uh, I got a little lost here. Let's see. Okay, I think I eliminated something. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It, uh, it'll it'll be close enough. Like I said, it's 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 more the getting something realistic that's believable rather than um, technical accuracy. I mean, if you really were that concerned about it being technically accurate, you could just project it or trace it, right? Put a little bit more in there, a little bit more shadow in there. And as big a puddle as I made, it's just about used up. Okay, I think I'm just about where I need to be. But I can I can definitely see how easy it is to get to get lost in all of these all of these very similar uh, scales on this spine cone, which is one of the reasons I I didn't want to try to do an entire composition. Um, as somebody mentioned earlier, I did post a. Um, um, a video of a very complex uh, full-length uh, thing and then actually the video is six hours long that's how long it is so just to indicate how long painting realism takes then uh, that'll give you some idea <laughs> but we're just doing one so I think we can I think we can get through one today uh, there we go. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to take this little bit of color that I have left and just water it down a little bit. And I'm going to start to fine tune, uh, like find some more of the middle values. So I've got some of the darks in here. I've got um, lights, obviously, which is what I started with. And I'm going to start to look for all these mid values. So now I can start breaking up these shapes. start creating all of this there's actually I I see a little bit almost of a reddish color in here just a, a slightly pink color I think I'm going to add a little bit of uh, maybe a bit of rose door to this just just for a couple of little accents that are not um, flat like this is this looks fine it's you know it looks okay but what if I pop in a little bit of color, in, intentionally going some warms and some cools? So a little bit of warmth. Now it's not a bright color. You know, you could see I've I've just added a little bit of red to that uh, to give it a slightly different tone.
Likewise, I'm probably going to come in with some um, cool colors in the shadows. This is pretty transparent. I, you know, it's pretty watered down. I don't want to go suddenly really bright or anything like that. <clears throat> Hopefully that little color difference will show you that, you know, you can make things a little bit more interesting than rather than just going uh, light value and dark value. Uh, think about color temperature too, that you're actually uh, creating a little bit of warmth or coolness in those colors to make things a little bit more dimensional. I need a little bit more of, see I missed a shadow on this one here. I'm going to come in with my shadow color in here. Put a little bit in there. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I like these brushes too. All right, so you can see the form is really starting to come along. Obviously, I'm going to come in with um, even more darks, and I'm, I'm going to start breaking down some of those values between light and dark. You know, I'm going to start doing that. Uh, uh, Lindy's, Linda's asking, are we able to get Shelley's reference photos? The reference photo that uh, for this one and for several of the, the like, now... I didn't always do it, but now I'm I'm adding the reference picture underneath the link to this, and that you can find on my Facebook page. My Facebook page is Shelley Pryor Fine Art, same as same as my uh, uh, handle for YouTube. Um, okay, so let's see if there's more shadows I can add in here. Now these are these are fairly diluted. I did my first ones with. Um, uh, a fairly dark color really to st establish the shadow the main shadows right off the bat and and now I'm breaking them down so these are a little less uh, uh, obvious I guess or intense Right, and you can see the more I add, the more dimensional this gets. Now, the real clincher for me is always in, in if you all know what a grayscale is, you've got, you know, your lightest light and your darkest dark. And if you work, so it's usually a nine, like nine seg sections in a grayscale. So if you're working between, say, three and seven, and, and you don't really extend it to the brightest bright or the darkest dark, uh, then you're really losing out on, a, on the opportunity to really make it three-dimensional. So I'm going to go now to some Payne's Gray. Now Payne's Gray's got blue in it, so I'm 
kind of really leaning towards a cooler color in my darks now. And watch as I come in and start to really put in some of the cool darks that are extra dark. Yes, Anna Mason's a wonderful artist, and she does also have a YouTube channel on here. Uh, I, I, I watch all of them. <laughs> I, I watch many uh, tutorials. And there's there's uh, a lot of wonderful uh, other watercolor artists who, of course, I follow. And as I come in and start to really add in the darkest darks, you really start to see how dimensional this gets. Payne's Gray is a, is a real cool dark, which I find very helpful for a lot of um, <laughs> I think I actually added another one in there. <laughs> I just realized that. But um, it's a real cool dark that will really emphasize some of those shadows. It's also um, not as subtle as the uh, neutral tint. I like the neutral tint because it's a little bit of a warmer, well, it's actually neutral, but um, it, you know, it leans more towards a almost a purple gray and it doesn't change the value too much, but uh, the, the Payne's gray will definitely change the value. It's very dark. You'll see really that this is going to get uh, so much more dimensional once I put some of these extra darks in. And it's these extra darks that I find so many people that are beginners um, are a little bit nervous of, right? Or or they struggle to get the dark. And one of the reasons that I am able to get this as dark as I am is because before I started drawing even, I I put a lot of water in each of my wells on my palette in order to soften up that color. Uh, if the color's not soft and creamy, you're really going to have a lot of trouble getting the value dark enough. Did the dark color dry duller? Yeah, you know what? A lot of warm colors, in it, well, watercolor in, in general will dry duller, a little bit darker and duller, or lighter and duller, I mean. Um, it, and, but the warm colors like uh, browns, reds, uh, oranges, any of those sort of warm tones always seem to die down when they're when they're dry. That's why I come in again with, and I add things like a bright red to to my brown in order to make it extra, like to make it the color, so, so I know that it'll dry the right color. I have to exaggerate how um, sort of intense the color is from the start. So I come in with a little bit more color right at the beginning so that when it dries, I know I'll end up with what I'm looking for. Blot my brush to soften. Actually, I think could be using my smaller brush now. Some of these areas I'm finding this brush is a little bit large. So I'm going to switch to my small brush 
and uh, as I start to fine tune some of this, I'll be able to uh, come in and add in some of the details. So, I, I, you know, some of those little lines and things like that, I really haven't started adding any of that in yet because, um, because of the, uh, uh, you know, the washes, the wetness that I'm putting in right now. As long as you're working really wet, don't put in any of your details. You're just going to obliterate your details if you do that. And then you'll have to redo them. So it's kind of a wasted effort. Extra, extra dark in some of these areas. Nice and nice and rich dark. It really makes those light areas um, pop out. So if you want your lights to look light, you make your darks look dark. All right, so just looking at that portion, you can see it looks a lot more dimensional than that portion, right? So getting those darks is very, very important. And I find just a lot of people starting out are really nervous about putting in those extra darks. But treat your treat your uh, paper like it's uh, it's an it's an experiment, right? To just like imagine it as a throwaway piece of paper and if you stop making it so precious you really will get braver about putting in some of those darks they won't be too dark but will be too dark if you don't have any of the mid values to balance off those darks and lights right so you notice I didn't jump into this dark right at the very very start I'm adding it in at the end so I started off with a dark but which I'm darkening further. Uh, and I'm rinsing and blotting my brush to soften as I go along. Let's get the last few in here. In terms of accuracy, I could really, I could draw this just about as, as precisely as it is in the reference picture. And, you know, I, I'd be inclined to do so if I had lots and lots of time. But, uh, you know, in a, in a quick demo, I'm trying to speed things along. I'm trying to give you both <laughs> detailed and, fa and, and fast, which is not easy to do. So, you know, if you're... If you're looking for detailed videos, uh, they're going to be longer. <laughs> I don't think that there's any way to to uh, really fast track that. Detail does take time, and when you see things in real time, you realize how you know exactly how much time it <laughs> it's really going into things. All right, so I'm going to come back to my uh, my brown color here. And pretty diluted because I don't want to do this uh, really dark or anything like that. But there's these little lines that go down each of the scales. And uh, and I'm using it a, a fairly diluted because the what would really kind of destroy this is to come in with something super dark and put an actual line down the middle. And if you have a paper towel, you can always uh, like put the line down and react quickly if that's too dark blot it with your paper towel and that will lift up a little bit of the color but you've got to do it so sort of almost in one motion right blot it as you're putting it down if you want to keep it subtle and soft
And then, you know, I would go back in, adjust things, you know, fiddle here and there, uh, trying to get get the values to exactly where they need to be. my my duplicate that I did there. I've got twins. No wonder I was having a little bit of trouble fitting everything in there. I could have counted them and certainly I would have picked up on that if I'd had, you know, if I had an hour just to draw it, then I probably would have been fine there. So I'm an hour in and I've got it painted. But, um, Right now, this this pine cone looks like it's sort of floating in space. I kind of like this nice soft shadow on the table, so I'm going to put that in. Let's get Payne's gray here. I'm going to dilute it a little bit because and my brush down. This is a brush that's full of wet color, and I'm coming in here underneath this uh, pine cone. Now I want to rinse and blot my brush. And I'm going to start way out here with clean water. And I'm walking up to it and I'm going to start way out here, which seems like ridiculous, but I'm coming right up to it and going right up into the into this into this shadow so that it'll soften. And the reason I start way out here is because if I didn't start way out here, I would end up just that color would rush out and it would find the end like where it was now dry and it would make a line. It would make a hard line. I'm going to put a little bit of that warm warm color in here just right along that edge. I like that little bit of warmth in that shadow. All right, let's try another one. Right under here, we've got some more shadow. And I'm putting down nice wet color here because if I don't put down wet color, how am I going to soften it? Put a little bit of that warm color around the outside of that. Nice clean brush. Let's start way out here. Make sure the edge of that gets nice and soft. You know, it's a gentle light. Um, it's not a very, it's not like harsh light. So it's a very gentle light. So we need to have some of that shadow in there. All right now because I made it a, an extra extra thing in there I'm going to put another shadow here even though it's not in the reference I'm going to put one here There we go. Okay, so I think I think you get the idea anyway. And uh, the uh, the pine needles, eh, I I could add that in. That's and I would basically approach the pine needles in the same way. Uh, I would have you know the light colors in there first, and then I would come in and start putting the darks in on top of some of the previous lights, and. 
uh, I would just need to, you know, if you've got one coming down here, well, obviously, if I, as I'm adding in a shadow, I'd have to stop there, continue on the other side, and so on. Um, but yeah, that, that's basically what I would do. I would mix up something like a, 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 I would use a cool green, so more blue, leaning towards a blue green and have it fairly diluted at the beginning. Uh, I, I'll i show just, maybe just a couple, just to uh, to get you going on this one. Uh, so I would use like a cobalt, let's use a cobalt here, and a bit of uh, areolin, just enough areolin to turn that into a green. I put in a little bit too much there though. So I'm going to put in more of the cobalt because I want to make it more of a blue-green. And uh, there's even some browns in this. Uh, you know, there's obviously some needles that are dried. I did just take it off my tree. So, for example... And this, because they're needles, boy, uh, that would be a little tough to, for me to do everyone exactly the same. Not impossible, but uh, definitely tough and, and time consuming to do it that way. So I can certainly get the same idea with doing just a few pine needles. to make it look like it actually connects <laughs> when you're going through the the um, scale each scale of the uh, pine cone I never realized how big these uh, needles actually were. Are like they're actually pretty large. <laughs> it, it doesn't look that large when you see it on the tree, but when you take a branch off, you realize, wow, they're they're actually pretty large. Long. There are different types of pine trees, There's scotch pine, fir trees, uh, white pine, there's a whole variety anyway. Now a couple of, there are a couple of brown needles in here, you know, let's put a brown needle in here. I'll just put a couple of those in there, just, just as an accent. But I would come in, maybe add a little bit of my uh, Payne's Gray to some of this to make an extra dark green. And if I have one needle uh, overlapping another needle, I just paint around that one. So I, I decide, okay, let's make this one on top. So that means the one underneath is going to be darker. Now it looks like it's on top. The stem behind. Oh, you painted in between the, the needles. <laughs> so if there was uh, a brown stem coming up through here, uh, this isn't where it is, but let's say there's a brown stem, you would just come up through here and you would paint it in the gaps, basically. There you go. Like So that looks like it's going up through the middle.
So you need a variety of different greens in here in order to create the, the right effect. I actually did a, um, a demonstration. What was it I had? Um, oh, lemons. When I did lemons and there was some rosemary that I did. So that's, a, that's one of my uh, previous uh, tutorials. And I get into a little bit more de detail about how to do that greenery. So uh, you might want to take a look at that video. Uh, you might find that helpful. It's called uh, Lemons and Rosemary, I think. But uh, that's, that's one of my previous videos that will go into a little bit more depth on that. But I really wanted to focus on the, on the actual pine cone here. And uh, I probably should wrap this up <laughs> before my voice goes completely. So um, thank you very much for joining me. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that one. Obviously, you can uh, build it up even more and more and get it a little bit more fine-tuned. You just It just takes time. That's it. You know, it's just going to take you some more time. But just a little bit of uh, adjustments here and there, wherever you need to get uh, the value changing. Uh, you put in light layers. Um, you know, put in those darks is one of the last things that you do, though. Uh, it, you may help. You may find that that helps you to get some of the other values uh, correct. But uh, anyway, that's that. And... Uh, We'll see you next week, and I'm sure I'll be right as rain by then. <laughs> Take care, everybody. Have a great week. Bye.